Hey you guys, it's Matt Frazier, the Psychic Medium, and I am back alive right now to talk to you about heaven and the afterlife and what I have experienced as a psychic medium and through all of these years of talking to the spirit world. And what's funny is, is that I've been getting so many messages and comments from all of you asking me about hell. And a lot of you guys have been saying, Matt, is there a such place as hell? And if not, what about evil spirits? Are there evil spirits? Where do the evil spirits go? So I am here to talk about that with you live right here and right now. So make sure that you ask me questions, leave them in the comments. And I'm going to tell you guys, this isn't a topic that I like to talk about because what I can tell you is this, all right, is that there are two sides of mediumship, right? There's a side of mediums that talk to souls that have transitioned on to the other side and souls that are in heaven. But then there's also a dark side that I don't like to speak about because it's not something that I delve into or I practice. And that is talking to evil spirits. Now, what I can tell you is this is that the same way that there are evil people that exist here in this world, there are evil spirits that exist in the afterlife. So we're going to talk about that. I want to tell you guys all about it. What's the truth? What's not? And I also want to share with you everything that I've learned about what happens to these entities. So I want to say hello to all of you here live right now. I see Cheryl is here. I also see that Lady Shine is here. I see that Deborah is here. And I see that Kelly is here as well. I see Deb is here. I also see that Alexa is here from New Bedford. Oh my God, I love that you're here. I also see that um, Sue is here. Good to see you as well. I see Carla Field. I see uh, Nicole. I also see that Stephanie is here. I see Sharon is here from Georgia. Oh my God, this is so awesome you guys. We're going to talk about this. So share this video right now, because I know that there's so many of you who might be a little bit scared to, to know about this, right? But you really do want to know. So that's the reason why I'm making this video. Because the first thing that I have to tell you is, yes, there are evil spirits out there. But what I can tell you is that evil spirits do not make it to heaven. Evil spirits do not transition on to the other side. And there's actually a term for evil spirits. Evil spirits are also known as earthbound spirits. So earthbound spirits are souls that are just that. They're souls that stay here on earth that are never allowed to transition onto the other side because they did evil, terrible things here in this world. And what I want you to know is this. There is no such place as hell. I've never heard a soul come through and tell me, hey, they're in another place. Or, hey, you know, that's, that soul, you know, is in a place called hell. Nobody has ever communi communicated that to me. But what I can tell you is that doing these readings and being a medium, I have also learned that there are souls that don't transition over to the other side. Now, here's what's truth, okay? And here's what's here's here's what um here's what's truth, here's what's fiction, okay? What's truth is is that our loved ones on the other side are in heaven for one reason, because they chose to transition on without any anger, without any pain, without any hurt, without any grudges. They made amends, they forgave, and their soul transitions on to the other side. Now, the people who are really evil, nasty, and terrible, who don't transition on, their soul stays here in this world. We call these as mediums, lower spirits, earthbound spirits, evil spirits. They all mean the same thing. These are souls that have not transitioned over or gone to the other side. But here's the one thing that so many people get wrong. And when I talk about people, I also talk about Hollywood and the people who write about this, right? Is that there aren't many evil spirits out there. It seems that way, right? Because we watch television shows about ha houses being haunted and places being haunted. But what I can tell you is, is that the same way that there's not many evil people here in this world, right? The good people far outweigh the evil people. It's the same thing with the other side. So if you want to think about it this way, right, is that there's only one, there's only one heaven, right? And the souls that don't make it to heaven, right, stay here on earth and they do one thing. They sit and they sulk in their anger and negativity and they sit in their sulk in their evil, nasty ways. Now, what I can tell you is this, right? A lot of people have misconceptions when it comes to evil spirits. An evil spirit is not a grouchy person that was here in this world. For example, that grouchy neighbor of yours down the street that was always complaining about where you would put in your car, where you were taking the trash out, what you were doing, you know, coming at the coming in the house at 11 o'clock at night, that neighbor most likely made it to heaven, right? Because just because they were a negative person doesn't mean that they were truly evil to their core. 
Earthbound spirits, evil spirits, evil entities are such with it evil to their core. They like to hurt people. They like to do terrible things. They did terrible, terrible, unthinkable things here in this world. And they show no remorse. They show no guilt. Those are the souls that don't transition on. But the souls, right, that have made mistakes or that have been angry or nasty here in this world, but really didn't mean it. Maybe their anger or their grief or their pain came from something else. Maybe it was the loss of a child. Maybe it was the loss of a relationship. Maybe it was that they had a really terrible upbringing. Maybe they had a really terrible struggle with, with addiction, right? They don't get punished for that in the afterlife. They don't go and not make it to heaven because they went through a bad time or a rough patch within life. You know, those are the souls that do transition over to the other side. And those are the souls that do change. I've had many souls that have come through to me that have been, you know, really negative, really nasty here in this world, have hurt people unintentionally just because they were so angry and upset with themselves, but once they got to the other side, once they started making their transition process to heaven, they realized how terrible they were, what they did to other people, what they said, you know, the things that they really regretted, right? And when they were on their transition over to the other side, they let it all go. And they let it all go for one reason. They were truly sorry. They made amends with the people that they hurt. They forgave, they forgave the people who had hurt them. And their soul was able to transition over. Well, what I want you guys to know is that I've seen that happen on many occasions. I've seen, you know, for example, there was just this reading that I did where this man was an alcoholic here in this world. He walked away from his family, from his wife, from his kids. He actually passed because, as a result of his alcoholism and his family could not believe that he made it to heaven. Well, it's not because they just opened the door and he accidentally got in. He made it to heaven because he was truly sorry for the person that he became. He saw once he was transitioning over how much he hurt his kids, how much he hurt his family. He saw the terrible things that he did. He truly was sorry. And he transitioned over to the afterlife and in turn watched over his family and came to me to deliver a message to them. And, you know, what was so terrible about this reading wasn't just about what happened to his family, but also this soul missed out on having this amazing life. When he went through his life review on the other side, he saw that he could have had, you know, an amazing family, been an amazing father, been an amazing husband. He had all of these things that he could have done that he let go of because he chose, you know, this alcohol, uh, the, the, this alcohol addiction, you know, over his own family. So what I want you guys to know is this, right, is that the evil spirits are the souls that go through that life review and don't care. They don't care about the people that they've hurt. They don't care about the things that, uh, that they've done. And what I want you guys to know is that those souls, like I said, are trapped here in this world. And those souls are the reason why you hear of hauntings. When you hear of haunted houses or haunted places or a certain part of the woods or a certain area of the world being haunted, right? It's because evil spirits go where nobody else is. They like to be by themselves. That's the reason why you'll always hear about a haunting taking place, you know, in an abandoned hospital, in an abandoned factory, in an abandoned building, or a place at the far corners of the earth where nobody else is. You might wonder why that is. Well, it's because evil does not like to be with, its, with, with happy people. Evil likes to be by itself, just like negative people. You know, the one thing that I can tell you, because so many people come to me and they're like, man, I'm so afraid of evil spirits. I'm so afraid of, you know, um, evil right in the afterlife. First of all, I can tell you that in heaven, evil does not exist. All the souls that I speak to in heaven are uh, souls that are at peace, souls that are loving, positive beings, and souls that want to do good, right, by helping us out here in this world. However, there are evil souls, right, that are also earthbound, that at the same way that the same way that uh, good souls come through, bad souls can also come through, but only if you let them. That's the reason why you hear of so many people having bad encounters with Ouija boards, right? Or when they're doing the spirit boxes or going on those paranormal investigations. Because to be honest with you, lower spirits sit at a lower vibration. So there's actually vibrations in heaven. You might have heard psychics or mediums talk about this. Angels are at the highest vibration. Then come our loved ones. So what I want you guys to know is that when you're a medium, connecting with the other side, right? When you see mediums close their eyes and they're listening and they're, they're focusing intently when they're channeling, what they're doing is we're trying to reach that higher vibration because remember, heaven is an energy space and that energy space is a higher vibration. Our loved ones are on a higher vibration being on the other side. But the lower spirits are just that. They're on a lower vibration. That's the reason why 
Lower spirits can be felt more easily to regular people. It's the reason why people can go into, people who aren't psychic or don't feel intuitive whatsoever can go into a haunted house or go into a haunted place, right? And feel something happen. They can feel an evil spirit. They can feel the haunting. They can feel things that had happened there, right? Why? Because of the fact that those souls are on a lower vibration. Well, those are the souls that try to screw us up here in this world. So the truth about evil spirits and earthbound spirits is that they're not in hell, but they're earthbound. So what they do is they try to wreak havoc, right, on the people within lives that let them in. Same thing with negative people. Evil spirits and negative, excuse me, evil spirits and evil and negative people have one thing in common. The same way that evil people don't like to see good people succeed, the same way that evil people here in this world try to ruin a person's life or try to pretend that they have some power over a certain, uh, over a certain person's life, right? The evil spirits try to do that as well. And that's the reason why I will not talk to them. I won't go to a haunted place. You will never see me on ghost mysteries. You'll never see me on paranormal investigations. You'll never see me do any of those things because I want nothing to do with evil people right here in this world, negative people here in this world. And I don't want to be associated with evil people or negative people in the afterlife, right? So the thing is, is that I have to let you know that what I've learned from spirit is this, because when I first started my journey, I'm going to be very honest with you guys right now. When I first started my journey, there were evil souls that tried to speak to me and try to connect with me. And I was so afraid. And in the beginning, I was really nervous because I was afraid that they were going to stop me from doing my journey here in this world. I was so afraid of, you know, what happened if they tried to come through? What happened if they tried to speak to me? What happened if they tried to talk? Well, when I'm talking to the higher vibrations, when talking to my angels and my guides and my own loved ones on the other side, they explain to me this. This is what I want to share with you. The other side explained to me that evil cannot have a place within your life unless you let them in. You are in charge of your own happiness. You are in charge of your own well-being. And although people can say t terrible things about you, do terrible things to you, the way that they can go and try to destroy your life or destroy you, they can never do it. You have power over your own life and happiness. And that is the one secret that evil spirits do not want you to know. Evil spirits and, and negative people want you to feel as though that you don't have control over your life. They want you to feel as though that... Um, as though that you're doing something wrong, as though that you're never going to make it. You know, evil people and negative people try to bring us down. Our loved ones and our angels on the higher vibration try to uplift us. And that's the reason why when you hear me give readings, right, all the readings that I, that I talk about, right, all the souls that I speak about, they all have life lessons to teach us. They all teach us ways to live our best life here in this world. And all of our loved ones on the other side that have transitioned on into heaven want to see you go do good things in your life. You know, when you're going through a challenge, they come through and lift you up. When you're having a tough time and you need guidance, they send you signs. When you're really stressed and troubled, your loved ones are there to show you that they're supporting you and love you in heaven. Well, the evil spirits are just the opposite, right? When we're having a tough time, when there's something that's going on in our life, they try to keep us there. They try to hold us back, same way that evil and negative people do. So what I want you guys to know is this, okay? Okay. What I want you guys to know is that in the afterlife, I have learned a lot of things. And I have also learned that the only way that evil spirits can present themselves in our lives is if we go looking for them, right? I've learned that the only people that are affected by evil spirits and negative souls are people who have gone looking for them. They've done things that they shouldn't. For example, Ouija boards. Ouija boards, you can let an evil spirit into your life. You've got to be really careful about it. And I want to, I want you guys to write in the comments, okay? Because how many of you have written to me? I've gotten so many messages from all of you guys who have said that years ago, you may have played with the Ouija board. You may have touched a Ouija board and an evil soul has had come through or a terrible soul may have come through, right? What I want you guys to know is that you're not crazy. I know many people who have had that happen. And one of the things that I have to tell you as well is this, okay? So the way that, that Ouija boards work is that you, when you use a Ouija board, it's all about the intention. When you're using that board, you're allowing any soul in the nearby area, good or bad, to come in, right, and to enter your life through that board. So the thing is, is that the, the, the higher vibrations, your angels and your loved ones don't need permission to enter your life. They're already a part of your life. They're already there because you already have a connection to them through love. Does that make sense? But with evil spirits, you don't have a connection to evil spirits. You don't have a connection to evil, 
So I'm telling you this because your loved ones is already a connection from the moment that you're born to the moment that you meet your soulmate to the moment that you meet your best friend, right? You, you form a bond with them and you carry that connection with you, even within death or when, when that person passes away, that love is a glue. It keeps us connected to our loved ones in spirit, right? It's the reason why we're able to connect with them, receive signs from them, feel them, and even sometimes even get dreams of them. But the evil souls, we don't have a connection to. But there's a way that we can accidentally make that connection happen. For example, playing with the Ouija board, going to a place where you know evil exists. Like, for example, oh my God, I'll never forget it. There was a woman who came to me in Vegas, right? And she was came up to me and she was like, oh my God, Matt, I can't believe you're here in Vegas. Of course, I was doing the show. And she came up to me and she was like, oh my God, Matt, you got to check out this place. You're going to be so excited. There's this place where every haunted thing right? Every haunted, um, every haunted artifact from around the world is in like some museum. I don't even know the name of this museum. I think it's called the haunted museum or something. I don't know. It's a haunted museum in Vegas where they have, you know, collected all of these things that were like possessed and haunted and all these things. She's like, you need to go. You're going to love it. And I looked at her, I go, are you freaking crazy? I'm like, I'm not going there. You think I'm going to go there? And she goes, well, you're a medium. Don't you, don't, you know, I thought you would think that was interesting. I go, I don't want to deal with any negative souls. It freaks me out. And I have to tell you this because, you know, I don't know where people get this, okay? I always tell you guys the truth. I tell you what I've learned being a medium. And there's some mediums out there that, you know, really beat me up over this, that get so upset about me talking about this. For example, when I tell you guys that there is no way, no way, okay, that evil can invite itself into your life, right, unless you let it. So when I say that, people like that, that's absolutely not true. So on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. Evil spirits can affect you. Evil spirits can come after you, all this stuff. I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm going to tell you something right now, right? Is that you have guardian angels with you. You have guardian angels, regular angels, right? You also have your loved ones in spirit there and you have your spirit guides that are there and that are with you. You also have your pets that watch over you. When I tell you that evil cannot come into your life, right? Evil spirits can't come into your life unless you let them. I promise you. I promise you that is true. Think about me. I talk to souls every single day. If there was one person on the hit list for evil spirits, it would be me. I'm number one. Okay, I'm going to tell you that right now. But the thing is, is that I don't let evil in. Before every online reading, I pray, I set my intentions, and I put up boundaries because I only want to talk to the good souls. And you can do that same thing. You know, if, and I want you guys to know that, you know, I've learned so much about evil spirits because, you know, I've learned to protect myself and keep my protect myself protected from all evil energy. But I want you guys to know the same thing because you have more of a chance of dealing with evil people and nasty people here in this world than you do of actually encountering an evil spirit. So what I want to tell you is this, okay, is that I want to tell you that, first of all, if we were to look at statistics, and I don't really know about statistics, right? Because no spirit has come through and said, oh, Matt, here's the population in heaven. Look at this pie chart. You know, it's never happened. But I'm willing to bet that if we looked at the statistics of the people who didn't make it into heaven, I believe it would be like 1% or even lower, to be honest with you. Because I believe that all souls, right, for the most part, are truly good. We only have that small, tiny, tiny percentage that are actually evil. So I'm telling you this because I don't want to freak you guys out. And I know that many of you, you know, get so nervous. Like, I know that I see a lot of comments coming through right now. A lot of you guys are saying, well, Matt, my loved one passed of suicide. Did they make it to heaven? You know, does that mean they're not going to the other side? Well, no, just because you pass of suicide does not mean that you were evil, right? That's two different things. And like I said, you know, sometimes people were nasty or negative here in this world, but it doesn't mean they were evil. Sometimes people were negative or nasty because there was something that happened in their childhood. Maybe they were abused. Maybe they were years stuck in an abusive relationship. You know, maybe that there was something that had happened years ago. Well, I'm telling you this because what I want you guys to know is that heaven has a way of healing all things. And what heaven also does is this heaven returns us back to the pure version of our soul. When we're born here in this world, we are born a free and pure soul. All we know is love. Think of little babies, right? Think of Royce. All Royce knows is love. My son, all he knows is love, right? It's amazing. And as we start to get older and we're here in this world, right? We start to learn different things. We start to learn hate. We start to learn pain. We start to learn jealousy, right? We pick up on all these things around us. And then, and then, because of the life experiences that we go through, right, we uh, we absorb all different energies around us. 
Now, some people turn and become very evil. Some people are just plain, you know, negative. And other people, you know, just continue to live their life as they are. What I can tell you is this, what I can tell you is, is that doing all of these readings and seeing all the souls that have made it to the other side and the souls that have, have not, I can tell you this. I can tell you that I believe that it's like 99.9% .9 of the souls are good. Like I said, it's only that small percentage that are evil, that are bad. So I'm telling you this because I don't want you guys to stress out over them. But I want to also tell you about how to deal with negative people and evil people here in this world. Remember how I told you how you have guardian angels and spirit guides with you? When you're dealing with negative people in your life, when you're dealing with negative, terrible, nasty beings, what I can tell you is this, is that if you go and you ask your angels and your spirit guides to remove those people from your life and to keep you protected from them, they will help you. Sometimes they just need your permission. So if you have a, maybe a best friend that, you know, used to be really close with here in this world, but something happened in their life and they've just been evil and negative and nasty towards you, right? Talk to your angels, talk to your guides. Like one of the, one of my practices that I do, okay? And you don't even have to know. Sometimes there's negative people around you that you don't even know about. So for example, one of the practices that I do is that I, before every, every time I go to bed, I always say, Listen, spirits, well, I don't say listen, I say spirits, angels, guides, right? Anybody who is not there in my life that to, to love, support me, and protect me, please let them exit my life. Please allow them to exit. And what I can tell you is this, is that when you do that and you set those intentions, you put it out there, it's amazing to see how the negativity just in the people who aren't serving you, right, just slip away. What's tough, what the tough part is, is this. The tough part is, is that dealing with negative people right? A lot of times, a lot of times it's hard because we feel like we can't escape them. But what I can tell you is that when something feels impossible here in this world, hand it over to heaven and your angels. They're always there to help you. In fact, they love dealing with the impossible. And I also have to tell you this, right? Please don't use Ouija boards. Don't use spirit boxes. Don't use any of those things because, you know, there's no need for that. You have a stronger connection. The connection that you have with your loved ones are so strong. And if you don't believe me, let me just explain it to you. I can't speak to your loved ones without you. When you come to see me, all right, this is the reason why the online readings and events are so important. When you come to me for an online reading, okay, before you show up, this room is empty. Nobody is here. But the moment that you come and see me at an online reading or at a live event, what's amazing is, is that you bring your loved ones in spirit with you. I wish you guys could see I wish you could see what I see through my eyes. If you saw, and this amazes me, I've been doing this now, what? For, so, I mean, I've been doing this publicly now for 13 years. And this amazes me every single time. Every single, every, every single time I step into a theater, right? It's just that, an empty theater. Rows and rows of empty seats. But the moment that you guys come to see me at a live event or a tour stop, it's amazing because the moment that you start to walk through the door, Right behind you are your loved ones in spirit. So what's really cool is that I don't bring your loved ones to you. You actually bring them to me. If you know you weren't there at a live event or, a, or an online group reading, there would be no way that your loved one would ever speak to me. Why? Because they don't care about me. They're trying to connect with you. You provide the connection to your loved ones. That's the reason why you don't need a Ouija board. It's the reason why you don't need a spirit box. It's the reason why you don't need any of those things. You already have the connection to your loved ones. So that's one of the things that I want you guys to know. The tough part is, is that a lot of times as humans, we don't trust in that connection. But that's the reason why I'm here, because I want to remind you of that. Trust in that connection. Trust in the fact that when you speak to your loved ones out loud or in your head, they can hear you. And that they're also trying to get in touch with you as well. And while I have you all here, okay, while I have you all here, I have to let you know something really exciting. I don't know if you guys have seen, because I know that Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all those places don't show you all. I don't know what, the, I don't know what goes on with these algorithms, but it drives me crazy because it doesn't show you all my posts. If you guys haven't heard, all right, I just announced all my brand new tour stuff. Where the hell's my phone here? Where did it go? I just announced all my brand, I had it charging back here. I just announced all my brand new tour stops, okay, where I'm going to be coming to give live readings. So if there's been someone that you've been wanting to connect with on the other side, I really hope that you'll come and join me live in person because I would love to be able to deliver a message from them to you. And it's funny because your loved ones use me as like literally their personal operator in heaven. So here's where I'm coming. I'm coming back on tour this week, all right? On Thursday, I'll be giving readings live in Biloxi, Mississippi. Then I'm coming to Ontario, Canada. I'm coming to give readings in Edmonton, Canada. I'm coming to Westbury, New York, where I'll be giving readings at NYCB Theater. 
I'm coming to Montclair, New Jersey, to the Wellmont Theater. I'm coming to Wallingford, Connecticut, to the Toyota Oakdale Theater. I'm coming to Tulela, Washington. I hope that's how you say it, to the Tulela Casino. I'm also coming to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm coming to Springfield, Massachusetts, where I'll be giving readings at MGM. I'm also coming to Portland, Maine, to the Merrill Auditorium, where I'll be giving readings there. I'm coming to Hampton, New Hampshire. We're almost sold out. I'm coming to give readings at the Hampton Beach Casino Ballroom. I'm coming to Toppenish, Washington, to give readings at Legends Casino. I'm also coming to Northfield, Ohio, to give readings at um, the MGM Casino. And I'm also coming to Erie, Pennsylvania, to Warner Theater, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, to Palace Theater, and to Detroit, Michigan, to the Motor City Casino Holy shit, I feel like I'm talking to more dead people lately than I am living. So those are all the places that I am coming, okay? So I am coming to Mississippi, Canada, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Washington, Massachusetts, Maine, New Hampshire, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and and uh, Michigan. So all the tour dates are up on my website, meetmattfraser.com. And while I have you here, okay, really important. This is really important. I have good news and bad news. The fact that I'm coming on tour, all right, I'm trying to get to as many cities as possible. I'm coming to all of those cities to do one thing, and that is to connect you with your loved ones in spirit. And while I have you all here, this is really important. I have to clear up a big misconception. So many of you have been messaging me and writing to me and you're like, Matt, I really want to come to one of your readings. Matt, I really want to come to these tour stops, but the only seats left are in the back. Matt, the front row is already sold out. Matt, the first three sections are already sold out. Oh my God, I'm afraid you're not going to see me. I need you to know one thing. And if you've been to my events before, you'll already know this. It doesn't matter where you sit. It just matters that you're there. Because when you are there, your loved ones in spirit are there. And the moment that I take the stage, right? Your loved ones and spirits start speaking to me. I'll hear, I'm this person's mother. I'm this person's son. I'm this person's daughter. And literally during these events, I have to leave the stage. Half the time I have to get off the stage because wherever your loved ones are calling me, I am going. And if there is a message that your loved one needs me to deliver, I will find you in that audience. So that being said, I hope that you'll join me. Okay, meetmattfraser.com right here is where you can find all of the tour dates and where you can sign up. And I also have to let you guys know this, all right? If I'm not coming to your city, or if I'm not coming to your state, I have to let you know that there are online readings available right now on my website. But here's the catch. March is completely sold out. April is completely sold out. There's only two dates left in May. So I'm letting you guys know this because literally I can only do online readings in between tour stops. So there's not going to be that many posted. Okay. Right now, there's only two online readings left in May. Everything else is sold out. And here's the secret. Okay. Okay. All the videos that you've been seeing, every single video you've been seeing me post on TikTok, on YouTube, on Facebook, every single person who's gotten a reading has just paid $19. Those are not private readings. I can't do private readings anymore, you guys. I'm so sorry. Literally, I had a five-year waiting list. I was doing readings every single day, and it just got too overwhelming between filming the show, between writing newsletters, between the blog, between writing my new book, between the tour stops, between taking care of Royce. It just got too crazy. But I realized with these online readings, I could reach so many people each week. So what's so amazing is that all the readings that you've done, I mean, all the readings that you've seen that, I, that I've done, right? Every single one on YouTube, Facebook, those are all online readings. I've been able to read over a thousand people just through these online readings alone. And each person only paid $19. So that being said, May 30th and May 31st, right? Those are the last two online readings in May. There won't be any more added in May. So I really hope that this catches you in time. If, if there's been someone that you've been wanting to hear from, I really hope that you'll sign up for one of those dates. Because the saddest thing is when somebody won't sign up because they're like, oh, Matt, I won't sign up because it's a private because it's not a private reading, or I won't sign up because I'm just too nervous. And then they miss out on hearing from a loved one. You know, I'm doing these online readings for a reason. My main goal is to get to as many people as possible. And every single person that has gotten a reading with me has done it one way. They took a chance. They joined an online reading. They paid the $19 and their loved ones have come through. So that being said, I tried to make it affordable for everybody. This is crazy. I don't know if you guys can see this. Can you guys see what I see? Look at this. Sold out, sold out, sold out, sold out. Everything is sold out because I can only allow a limited amount of people. So all of these events are sold out. The last of it, the, the last two events in May are May 30th and May 31st. So if you can make it, you've got to head on over to my website right now, meetmattfraser.com while there's still time. And what I want you guys to know is this as well, right? One of the best ways to sense and feel your loved ones with you is to have conversations with them. When you talk to your loved ones, whether it be out loud or in your head, I promise you that they can hear you. 
in being a medium, I can also tell you that I've had people do amazing things and their loved ones have seen them. I've seen, I had people text their loved one's old phone number and their loved ones have seen the text message in heaven. I've seen people write messages to their loved ones on Facebook and the loved ones will talk about seeing those messages. I've had some people write messages on paper, send it up to the sky and those messages have been, have been received. I just had a woman who had lost her son. She wrote a message on a balloon and let it go to, into the sky and her son came through and saw the message that she wrote to him. What's truly amazing is this. What's truly amazing is that your loved ones can communicate with you at any given moment, right? The same way that you communicate with them and that is through energy. The same way that you are thinking about messages to your loved ones and your loved ones can hear you, you can also receive messages through your loved ones through dreams, through signs, and through coincidences, like repeating numbers, hearing songs that remind you of your loved ones. What I can tell you is, is that the signs are all around us, even when we don't see them. What I can also tell you is that your loved ones are always there. So don't, don't even worry about evil spirits. Don't worry about the negative side of, of, of psychic ability, because what I can tell you is this, is that as long as you keep your intention pure and you only talk to your loved ones in spirit, you have nothing to worry about because they're watching over you, guiding you and protecting you. And it's not just them. It's your spirit guides, your angels, and your pets that are also watching over you as well. So I hope to see you at my next tour stop. And I hope that you'll come and join me by going to meetmattfraser.com. That's meetmattfraser.com. Those next two online readings are May 30th and May 31st. I really hope you'll come and join me. It's going to be an amazing experience. And I cannot wait to meet you and your loved ones and spirits. Like I said, when you attend an online reading or an event, I don't bring your loved ones to you. You bring them to me. They're right behind you, right on that side of the screen. And what's amazing during these online readings is I get to see them trying to communicate and trying to talk and trying to speak. And that's when I come in. I listen to their messages. I deliver them to you. And it's amazing seeing the healing that takes place with every single reading. So that being said, I hope to see you then. And remember, your loved ones are only just a thought away. So head to the website, reserve your spot, and I will see you in May.